Our final sessions for this episode explore how 5G and the Internet of Things are accelerating transformation in business around the world. And Sheehan leads Vodafone's business division, which includes over overseeing Vodafone's fixed, mobile, unified communications, cloud, security, and IoT services and support. As Anne couldn't join us for the broadcast, we pre-recorded a special keynote with her earlier this week. Please welcome Anne. Coventry University and Vodafone are providing the very first standalone 5G network in the United Kingdom. So this year, academics like me are able to provide seminars for students, virtual reality powered by 5G. We know that virtual reality has been in use for years, decades even, but the 5G edition allows for a completely seamless, low latency, highly immersive learning experience for our students. So we've just done a remote learning lesson with the VR learning experience app and it was absolutely amazing. We could see all different parts of the human body without actually having to be there. So even without the COVID crisis, we live in a global learning community. And what 5G allows us to do is to take the learning to the students wherever they are, anywhere around the world. I really like the fact that you can just sit there and the lecturer will go through every single part with you. Sorry, Natasha, can you go through that again for me, please? Basically, when you're using the VR headset, if you're standing there and a red blood cell's coming towards you, it'll put it off its path. So it's as if you're actually within the bloodstream. So 5G allows us to do things we haven't done before. This technology has amazing potential. So this is just the first step on what we hope is a very long and very exciting journey. What an incredible video using digital technology, high speed, low latency connectivity to transform the way that students learn, overcoming geographical boundaries, ensuring accessibility to whoever wants to learn, no matter where they are in the world. And this is not just something that's happening in the future. This is happening right now. Coventry University is using digital technology to transform the way they teach medical students. So just think prior to COVID-19, Coventry University, worldwide renowned, medical students come, they have a great interaction with their tutors. However, COVID hits, you've got social distancing, and suddenly their business model is turned on their head. But actually using the power of technology, using 5G and using VR, they have overcome these challenges and decided they weren't going to be stopped by the pandemic. And the film that you've just seen shows um, technology solving practical problems, but actually the implications are much bigger because what we've seen in Coventry University is democratizing access to world-class teaching. So just think you have students in the developing worlds that now by means of using remoteness can actually get an avail of some fantastic um, facilities that Coventry University have. And in front of our eyes, digital technology is helping us create a better future. It's not a pipeline, it's not a dream, it's right here and it's right now. So hello everybody, my name is Anne Sheehan and I am the Director of Business for Vodafone UK. And in Vodafone, we're focused on using technology to change the way that businesses work and grow. I'm really excited to be part of the Wired Live event today. It's a terrific event and I'm the number one fan. And Wired Live is all about celebrating innovation, inspiring people about the potential of technology to create a better future. And for me personally, I'm incredibly optimistic um, about the world and, and the future that's ahead of us. And why? Because well, if I reflect back on the last nine months, technology has just simply done amazing things. Look at the, uh, during the, the pandemic, technology has kept millions of people productive while they all work remotely. It's kept national critical infrastructure services going. It's kept supply chains going. And it's also given us that human connection. It's given us the ability to connect with family, friends and colleagues when we've all been forced to work in a remote world. In Vodafone, our mission is about connecting the UK for a digital future. And in 2020, that digital future is arriving much faster than any of us ever thought or imagined. 
And I think if we look at the pandemic, I think the pandemic has really put digital transformation into fast forward. A process that we thought was going to take years has now just happened to us in the last few months. And I just want to kind of break down the pandemic into different phases. If we look at the first phase, which was really, I guess, July to uh, or March to July, the pandemic was all about connectivity. Millions of employees suddenly realized they've got to work from home and businesses had to facilitate that. And we in Vodafone had to ensure that our 10,000 um, employees and work colleagues were able to work in a remote environment. And we did that in a matter of, of days. And we've also been helping our customers change the way they operate. We saw a massive leap in voice and data traffic as businesses migrated at top speed to a new way of working. But also overnight, businesses had to find new ways to engage with their customers. In Vodafone, we suddenly had 500 of our retail stores closed and we had to make sure that we could connect with our customers um, and make sure that our contact centers could operate remotely and our digital channels stepped up so that we were able to serve our customers. And I think in reflection, I think when we all look back on the last few months, it really has been a crazy time. But after that first intense phase of the pandemic, I think the mood is now really starting to change. Organizations are getting some breathing space, they're having a look around and they're taking stock of the environment. And words that we're, or phrases that we're hearing regularly being spoken by businesses are, you know what, if this is business as usual, this is the future. And you saw um, in the opening video from Coventry University how they responded to the challenge. They've always been at the forefront of technology. They had been discussing for the last year or two about remote learning. Suddenly, the pandemic forced them into a situation where they had to change their business model and they seized digital with both hands. And I think we've been really surprised um, in Vodafone at just the speed of which our customers have been changing. So COVID, or sorry, Coventry University is not just an isolated case. And actually the conversations that we're having is customers are talking to us now about business as usual, and they want to know how they transform, how they use digital technology to help them be themselves be more productive, be more secure, be more resilient, more resilient, but most important, actually, how do they become more innovative? The other thing we're seeing is our conversations are now at a different level within the organization. Our conversations are with C-suite, they're with board members. And, and why do I think that is? I think because a lot of decisions and, and technology investments now are being made because they're going to change business models for several organizations. They're going to drive cultural change. And therefore, the decisions are being made at C-suite level. Also, we're seeing when we're talking about digital transformation to our customers is C-suite want to make sure that the return of investment is within 24 months. They don't want to invest now with you get a return in five to 10 years time. They want to make sure that they can see returns and value um, in the next 24 months. And they don't want to wait around for the digital future. As far as our customers are concerned, the digital future has started now and they need to understand how to adapt and thrive in that digital future. And interesting is, I'm going to use a phrase now, which I guess if somebody told me that I would be speaking at, at Wired Live in 2020, I'd be remote. And I was actually going to use the following words, which are technology to the rescue. I would never have thought that I would use those words, but that's exactly what's happening in today's world. Everyone in the tech industry and pre pretty much, I guess, everyone attending Wired Live today is helping customers use technology to become more resilient, more productive, more innovative. One way or, or another, we're helping our customers to adapt to this business as usual. But as our customers in Vodafone go digital, a lot of their questions are around data. And we see data as the lifeblood of the digital organization. It's essential for running a business, no matter what segment or sector that your business is in. And with data, it gives the organizations the ability to manage, to process data. It gives them insight. It gives them complete control over what's happening in their business environment. And technologies such as Internet of Things and connectivity, particularly 5G, are letting businesses put data and digital into the heart of their organizations. They're allowing them to transform. And it's now, you know, 5G and IoT is not something that's way off in the future. It's here today. And I would encourage you all to look at 5G. It is truly a game-changing technology, not simply with the speed, 
but because it's a system that enables organizations to digitally transform the way they work. And I'll bring that to life with some examples in a while, but it's got high capacity, it's got cutting edge security, low latency, and it can support masses of amounts of connections. 5G capabilities are making businesses really think differently about how they run their operations. So check out this video um, around 5G. So there you see 5G allowing businesses and whole industries to transform. So I'm just going to kind of hone in on three key industries to give you um, an example of how 5G is alive today in our world, helping transform. And I'm going to focus in on manufacturing, healthcare, and also planet, I think, which is important and so important to, to all of us today. So let me just take a manufacturing and let me take an example of of a company that's doing it in the UK, and that's Ford. So Ford are using 5G to um, technologies to transform the way they build the new generation of clean electric vehicles. So they wanted to accelerate innovation and production, and their answer was, we've got to, we've got to move to digital manufacturing. And every process in their factory is now digitalized and joined up, using 5G to share vast amounts of data they're experimenting, they're innovating faster, they're using VR, and it's allowed them to be much more flexible, faster, and reconfigure their production lines, giving them a competitive edge. So using 5G to really just completely digitalize how they manufacture. If we look at healthcare, I mean, you've originally, uh, um, already seen Coventry University transform medical education. So how now will we teach our up and coming and, and doctors of the future, we can do it in a remote way. And I think COVID-19 has been an incredible catalyst for digital transformation in the NHS. I'll give you some stats. In April alone, over 70% of GP sessions were carried out remotely. We're now using a Vodafone um, to assist with the NHS using drones to bring organ supplies to remote islands in Scotland. We're seeing connected ambulances. We're partnering with an amazing uh, company in the UK called Proximy to do um, remote surgery, again, using 5G. So endless scope for 5G te technologies to transform healthcare. This was a concept literally a year or two years ago, but actually what we've seen the pandemic do is just bring all that forward. We now have an amazing use cases. And I think another inhibitor that we would have seen is will our citizens adapt? Will they want to use this technology? And we've really seen, particularly in healthcare, that has not been a, a barrier, right? Everybody has leaned in to adapt and, and, and really adapt the technologies in this new world. And last but not least is the environment. Again, 5G technology, digital technology playing a central role. And two examples. The first is the 5G rural Dorset, where we're creating a 5G test bed, which is basically a real, a giant laboratory where we're working on smart farming and land management solutions. Another project we're working on is the Smart Sound Connect. So we will turn Plymouth Sound into the world's first 5G test bed for marine technologies. We will support the development of innovations like smart clean electric ferries and autonomous minesweepers. And the list goes on and on. So really encourage you to re let's really explore the power of 5G. Now, I also mentioned Internet of Things. So I just want to spend a few minutes talking about that again, um, really enabling transformation today and incredibly exciting. It's such a powerful technology that's enabling our customers and organizations to respond to change, reduce cost and simplify their operations. I talked earlier about data being the lifeblood of the digital organization. Well, Internet of Things lets that lifeblood flow to the extremity. It gives organizations more control and insight. It makes organizations so much smarter. They can respond faster and quicker because of the insights that they can see. 
And interesting enough, people have been talking about IoT for years, but it's been very much in an abstract, something that's coming in the future. You know, not a lot of organizations adopting it, under, you know, confused, you know, it's very complex. Will it give an ROI? An ROI? But actually now we're seeing that IoT is delivering real benefits today. And, and some very topical ones, which was recently seen in the last few months um, using IoT heat detection cameras, organizations using them to help keep their people secure during COVID-19. The Forestry Commission using narrowband IoT to better understand climate change and how we measure it. Farmers using IoT to make their cows smarter. Check out this amazing um, company called Mucol, who basically sends alerts to a farmer when a cow is calving. Um, another great example in the UK is SES Water using digital sensors to track um, and monitor underground water pipes so they can detect water leakage. And again, the list goes on and on. And, and in Vodafone, we report we um, released a report recently around organisations that have adapted IoT. And, and what have the results been? And, and just kind of three points. First, 67% of the organizations are saying it is generating more revenue. Three out of four are growing their market share in the area that they've adopted it. And the vast majority, which was 87%, are seeing the ROI on their investments, um, which I think are, you know, are really incredible results. Now, IoT is, key, is a key technology for digital transformation. It delivers today and gets businesses really ready for what's coming in the future. And I'm really excited that we've got together with a fantastic company called IoT.next to create, I believe, the first end-to-end -end IoT solutions for the UK. This is giving customers everything they need to digitalize their business processes using IoT. And IoT.next is an amazing um, company. And in conjunction with Vodafone, we will do this across all verticals healthcare, education, manufacturing, um, and building management. And I think in the past, and what we've seen, particularly in the UK over the last few years, that the organizations feel that you know, the barrier to entry to adopt these solutions is, is high because it's complex, it's difficult. I don't have the in-house expertise, but actually Vodafone working with IoT.next, we're just gonna make IoT easy to deploy. So too many businesses, we want to bust the myth that too many businesses see it as futuristic and that they really need particular expertise. And we're going to make IoT easy, make it highly customizable, really simple to integrate and capable of delivering incredible data insights and control. And my colleagues, Patrick and Nico, will talk to you later on about the platform, how it works and how we will be able to make IoT easy for everybody across any business or vertical in the UK. So to conclude, I guess we're all believers. We wouldn't be at this event today if we didn't believe in the power of innovation to create the future. I think we're also aligned that it has been an incredibly difficult 2020. But I think we should all take hope and that digital innovation has shone out as a beacon of hope. We have seen technology enable individuals and organizations simply achieve incredible things. I think the future is arriving fast and that's putting pressure on organizations to transform and go digital. And we all have a duty care, no matter what uh, services we supply, but really to help organizations, be they small, medium or large businesses in the UK to adopt these technologies and to transform. Let's help bust the myth on IoT and 5G and really get organizations embracing these technologies and working with them and supporting them, working together in ecosystems to help them create the future. Now, I know you're going to see and you're going to hear more about the power of technology to make the world a better place uh, throughout the day. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you find it inspiring. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you.